welcome home. I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist. And this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not a substitute for therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or share your progress, email me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, after you listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. Thank you so much for joining for another episode of Homecoming. And as we continue to journey together working Uh, Through this coronavirus, I wanted to focus on parenting ourselves and parenting our children uh, during the virus. And so we had an earlier episode about reparenting, and many of us who are trauma survivors did not get some things as we were growing up. And so it's important for us to give those things to ourselves now and also breaking the cycle in terms of Uh, the intergenerational transmission of trauma and being mindful about how we care for our children, especially during these times of crises, uh, the global pandemic and the trauma, which is uh, pervasive around the globe. And so I am grateful that you are taking this time to tune into the podcast because our wholeness and wellness are important, especially during times like these, uh, that if we have been working on ourselves and growing and healing in certain ways, uh, that when trauma comes, it really disrupts us in many ways. And so uh, this global pandemic uh, is particularly traumatizing uh, for a number of reasons. One, the fact that it is global and so many people are being affected. Usually if you're facing an individual trauma, then the people around you are uh, in a better place to be a resource for you, both emotionally, uh, perhaps financially, also socially or spiritually, Um, but it is especially challenging when everyone is going through uh, to varying degrees. And so uh, we see that impact on us. uh, And it also uh, is particularly challenging because it is not something we can necessarily escape. Right. So if we're in an abusive relationship and we try to plan for an escape, um, if we uh, experience assault, uh, then we try to uh, survive the assault to outlast it, to get to uh, that post-trauma moment when people have uh, been sent off to war uh, and then they come home. They are dealing with post-trauma. Um, But one of the challenges with this is it is an ongoing trauma. So it is uh, similar to if we live in in a a neighborhood where there is a lot of violence, then that is an ongoing trauma. Or if we are a part of a marginalized community um, that experiences pervasive uh, racism, sexism, classism, Uh, able-bodyism, heterosexism, um, that those things are continuous. And so how do I heal um, when there is either pervasive hate uh, toward me or when there is uh, a health pandemic um, or where there is community violence, right? And so those can be a challenge for us individually and uh, on our families and parenting. So the first thing I want to offer to you is to take a moment to center in on your breathing and to scan your body and notice where you may be holding stress in your body. Uh, Sometimes we hold it in our back or uh, our foreheads, our shoulders. And so giving yourself permission in this moment to take in sacred pause that you are focusing now on you, on your healing, on your restoration for you and your family. And that is a beautiful sacred act that we are engaged in together. And the first piece I want to offer for you as it relates 
uh, to your parenting is to not get caught up in comparison. I think especially with social media, we see people cope in different ways and some people cope with busyness. And so you may see people posting, doing uh, a million different activities with their children and that's just not you or your household or your children. And so uh, when we see other people with their children, instead of going into comparison, uh, we can celebrate if it looks like that family is having a good moment or doing something that's a good idea. So I can celebrate them. I may be inspired by them. It may be something I haven't done, but something I'm open to trying. Uh, so you may see some people on social media posting uh, game night where they're playing games with their kids. And you may see that and say, well, I've, I've never done that. And so instead of being stuck in a feeling of guilt about it, um, to say either that's something I may be inspired to try, or if I say that's not for me, to still be able to celebrate them, well, that's good that they are having that moment, right, that looks joyful. So to remove uh, the, the pressure that we often uh, place on ourselves or other people place on us for perfection. And the reality is uh, you may be tired, you may be stressed, uh, you may really be wanting a break and this podcast might be your break. And if it is, I, I'm glad that you're taking it. Um, and you may be frustrated uh, you may have uh, children with special needs. Uh, your children may be acting out in terms of their behavior. And so to uh, extend to yourself compassion and kindness and patience. And that's a part of me reparenting myself is giving myself permission to not have to be perfect. Giving myself permission to acknowledge how I feel uh, because the beginning of good parenting actually starts with good self-care and that's often not taught. We often just think about self-sacrifice and martyrdom, but when we have neglected ourselves uh, and our needs over time, it can show up with frustration, with irritability, with anxiety, uh, with increased depression and despair. Uh, we can take it out on our children and cover it up by saying we're uh, disciplining them or we're correcting them. But really that underlying hostility that you feel, that resentment that is really coming out um, in toxic ways could be relieved if we uh, did some things to take care of ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually, that you may need a nap. Right. Uh, you might need to if you have the luxury of going in your room and closing the door for to just de, uh, decompress. You might need uh, a shower in the middle of the day to help to uh, ease what you're feeling. Uh, you may need to put on the music that soothes your soul and speaks to you in a particular way. And so being uh, intentional to know that reparenting myself caring for myself uh, is one of the ways that I improve my parenting, one of the ways I enhance my parenting. And then when it comes to your children in particular, it's important to take into account the different ages and personalities of your children because uh, kids are different and they're not going to all respond in the same way. And so we want to have patience and understanding uh, instead of uh, comparing children in a way that leads them to either feel they have to compete with each other, be jealous of each other, or feel that uh, your love for some is more than it is for others. So just like uh, it's important for us not to compare ourselves harshly with other parents, it's important to give space for children to be their unique selves. And so some children may, like some adults, 
cope with busyness. And so they might start doing a lot of things around the house that you celebrate them for, but they're still feeling anxious. And then another child may uh, start acting out um, or zoning out, daydreaming, uh, being disconnected, where you have to keep repeating yourself and they really are not even hearing you. And so being mindful that they are under stress as well and they're being affected as well. So I want to encourage you for yourself in your reparenting of you, as well as your children, to limit your exposure to the news. So it is important to be informed, but you don't want to have the news playing all day, every day, uh, because often they are uh, spending a large part of the day talking about deaths. And when there is the constant litany of death playing in your background, uh, the children are taking that in and they don't really have a way uh, to digest it uh, without it uh, really causing a lot of fear and panic. And so we want to give them information, but we also want uh, to make it age appropriate. And we want to uh, give some reassurances um, that we are doing what we can uh, to keep them safe. And then they, like us, uh, benefit from some sense of control. What are the things that I can do? And so children can be taught about uh, washing your hands and singing a song while you wash your hands. Uh, they can even help with the wipes of wiping down the counter or if you're uh, wiping doorknobs, being mindful about that. Um, and so what are things that are uh, in their power and control to do? And um, we want them to have information, but not be overwhelmed with constant exposure. So that's important for them and also for us. So we want to limit exposure for ourselves and also our children and then have direct conversation with them. So they're hearing bits and pieces and trying to make meaning of it, uh, but to have an age appropriate conversation with them and along with providing a piece of information about what this is and why they aren't going to school or why they're not able to have play dates. You want to also uh, have a conversation that has opportunity for them to share. And so asking them what's on their mind, what are they thinking, what are they feeling, what are their hopes, uh, what are their fears. You want to also ask them and give permission for them to talk about their losses. Uh, sometimes we are raised uh, in an environment where to tell the truth is called complaining. Right. So we'll say you can't complain. You're not allowed to complain. You're just supposed to be grateful. And what that does is make people feel guilty for a human response. And uh, so, for example, if they're not able to see their friends anymore and they're sad because they miss their friends, you want to create an environment where it's OK to say that. And let's be honest about for ourselves as well. You know, there are people we miss seeing or places that we miss going. And I think sometimes we fear uh, acknowledging that because we're afraid we're going to get stuck in a depression. But denial is not healthy and it's not healing. And so to ask your children about what do they miss about uh, going to school? You know, at first it may have se seemed like kind of fun and games of like, oh, good, no school, like a vacation. Um, but as the days add on or the weeks add on um, or some things that are canceled, like a graduation or a prom or if they were supposed to have a class presentation they had been working on um, or the school play is not happening uh, or the school choir is not going to get to perform, um, to talk to them about what they miss, if they miss uh, going and playing soccer with their friends or basketball um, if they miss uh, going to a community center or meeting up with their coach or going to church, uh, to have that conversation and to be mindful not 
every child is going to be identical. And so some will feel that in a very heavy way. Uh, some uh, children are more tuned into their emotions um, and you want to not meet that with judgment. So sometimes uh, children who are very connected to their tears um, are called too sensitive and you want to uh, step back from that kind of programming, um, but to give space for however uh, those, as long as it's not in a destructive way, um, the way people are expressing, the way your children are expressing their feelings. And that will also pull for you to be more honest uh, with yourself because it is hard for us to tolerate people sharing distress um, if we are not comfortable with our own sorrow, right? Then it is triggering for us and we, and we shut it down. So as you come home to yourself, as we come home to ourselves more authentically, we can create space for those around us, our loved ones, our children, our parents, to uh, come home to themselves and being honest about how they feel. Then it is important uh, for trauma survivors and in the midst of it as much as possible uh, for there to be some structure to the day, some structure to life, uh, because there is so much that is unpredictable for there to be some things that children can count on in terms of routine. Um, so I would not uh, advocate for giving up bedtime even though we say, well, like they don't have to get up in the morning, so like let them stay up late. Um, if this was like one weekend or a couple of days, then we could say, you know, oh, that could just like be uh, a fun break. But we really, uh, it seems, are going to be in this season for a while. And so uh, there's some sense of structure, predictability, and routine especially in the midst of chaos, can be helpful. And so uh, still encouraging uh, children to go to bed at a particular time, um, still encouraging daily hygiene. And so um, washing, brushing their teeth, um, this is a, a, it's a new day, right? And so that also helps us um, to have a rhythm to our living, a rhythm to life. And um, most, uh, many schools have given some schoolwork uh, either through packets or online. Um, and I know we have a global audience, so some people may be in places where uh, schoolwork is not provided. Um, but I want you to know there are many uh, educational resources online that used to have a subscription. And now because of the global pandemic, uh, they're offering it free. So uh, trying to stay in there, even free apps that are learning apps. And so for a part of the day to be spent in learning and feeding their minds and to shift our mindset around school. I see some people posting online and I can tell their idea of learning is very punitive. And so they think of learning as punishment. So they're posting things like, don't make children learn uh, they are experiencing a trauma. And so, yes, if the, if the learning is um, uh, abusive or restricting, um, if the learning is a punishment, then we are not punishing children, but it is a good opportunity to shift our approach to learning right? That learning, feeding my mind, my spirit, learning about things uh, that speak to me, that spark my curiosity and creativity, uh, reading about different people's lives, uh, those can be things that are very nourishing. Um, and so um, I would say continuing to incorporate some learning throughout the day with flexibility. So it doesn't mean that at, they have to do like at school where it's uh, all these hours straight without breaks, because even at school, that's not how most schools do it. Uh, there is break time and snack time and fun time. There's recess. And so having time in the day for them to uh, play, 
time in the day for them to relax and just kind of sit and do nothing. Uh, and then some time in the day also for exercise, uh, not only because it's good for us physically, but also emotionally um, that people hold stress within their bodies. And then also a lot of people, including kids, are doing emotional eating. And so if they're constantly eating to deal with the anxiety and not moving, uh, that's going to create challenges for them health-wise and for us. And so these different aspects of the day uh, are important not only for us to kind of legislate or dictate or command, but e even as we reparent ourselves of what have I done today to try to move my body? Uh, what have I eaten today? Have I done anything today that feeds my mind or my creativity? And have I given myself time today uh, for joy or play um, or to just zone out, right? That I can uh, give myself permission and space to also just relax. So uh, another important component is giving opportunity, trying to provide opportunity for social connections. So just like many of us deal with um, a feeling of isolation um, or loneliness, our children can feel that too, even though we're in the home with them, uh, trying to facilitate ways for them to connect with their peers. And uh, that can be online. So with younger children, uh, video chatting, you know, video chat with their grandparents, with their cousins, uh, with friends from school, if, they, if you have their numbers. Um, and then for uh, adolescents, many of them are on social media, um, you want to be tuned into their social media life because um, there can be uh, dangers there for us to be cautious about. It can also create a great space for our community and connection uh, for them to be able to talk with their friends and peers and not feel so isolated. Um, and so even though we are physically distancing, we can stay socially connected. And that's important for children and it's important for us. And so thinking about, um, especially for those who are single parents, uh, trying to create space for adult conversation. And you're, you, you will often need that, right? It's one thing to talk with your kids or to play with them or to uh, check in on their learning or cooking, but um, trying to also cultivate your adult relationships for adult conversation um, is especially important to feed that aspect of you emotionally and socially. And then the last thing I will say in terms of parenting our children and reparenting ourselves is we want to, some of us want to, or I invite you to consider cultivating compassion in your children. And so looking at ways that they can be of service or a blessing to others. And that can be in practical ways of uh, sharing supplies with a neighbor, or it can be um, sending in a, a supply or a donation uh, to an agency or organization uh, that is doing important work during this time. But it can also be in terms of their spiritual lives. And yes, children can meditate and children can pray. And in that place of meditation and prayer, uh, they can uh, have the invitation to send compassion, to send love, to send kindness to those who are sick, to those who are suffering, to those who are lonely, to those who are struggling financially, uh, all of those different components so that uh, we have children and we ourselves are not uh, consumed by powerlessness, but to know even though there are aspects of this that are out of our hands, that there are still ways that we can uh, show kindness to each other and definitely not passing down uh, discrimination um, or stereotypes or racism, 
um, because in the midst of this global pandemic, uh, we see some people engaging uh, in blaming um, uh, China or blaming Asian Americans and, and responding in a very hostile way. And we want to be very intentional about having a, a talk with our children about how that is not okay and how uh, we need to have compassion and care and kindness toward all people. And as we um, are mindful in our parenting of our children and our reparenting of ourselves, we will discover ways to refill our cups so that even in the midst of a global pandemic, I am intentional of not operating on empty, but going to things and people that can edify and pour into me so that I can have something, some well to draw from as I awaken each day. I am grateful that you are here and that in the midst of all of this, that we are journeying together. You and your children are deserving of care, of love, of safety, of respect. And to the extent that it is possible for you to be mindful to give that to yourself and to give that to those that you love. I invite your soul to tell your heart, mind, body, and spirit, welcome home. <laughs>